All right, let's go ahead and get this oil drained. The uh, nut in the bottom of this pan is a one and one eighth. So, pretty good size. It's been a while since we've done, this, this has been done to it. As I fall into the tractor. <laughs> All right. Let's see how this turns out. Got my bucket in place. Pretty dark, but not awful. Not awful. There we go. I'm get a rag and clean up my hand and clean this nut up. All right, guys. So I know you probably can't see because of the light, but there's the oil draining out still. Then we come up here. We got a few projects going on at once. So that's why the workbench is kind of cluttered up. Um, here, there's the drain plug. Had a few oil changes in this day. Interesting how it's kind of bowl shaped right there. Um, anyway, so get that, finish getting that cleaned up. And I'll finish getting this here drained. The fun part is going to be this oil filter because, uh, well, it's just going to be fun. So I'm going to get that bolt undone and get this cover off of here, and we'll see what all is living down in the filter. So, all right, let's keep going. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this oil filter off of here now. It takes a one-inch wrench. Let's see how hard this is. Oh, actually pretty easy. I'm pretty sure this is going to cause a ginormous mess when I take this housing off of here. So probably what I want to do is line the floor with some rags. Just so that <clears throat> I got everything nice and clean. Try to keep it clean. Assuming that's all the way out. And there comes the mess. Oh, there you go, it's contained. Kinda. Kinda let it glove out now. actually all making it in the bucket. Pretty impressive if you ask me. There is just a couple little dribbles on the floor, but that's easy to clean up. I'm just going to let this keep draining. Definitely not the easiest oil filter to change because of the, the draining, but hey, you get what you get. I'm going to let this drain, and we'll come back and uh, check it once it's off. Okay, so here's the, the top. Looks pretty good. Leave that down there. Here's your filter. Like I said, it's just a cartridge. It's uh, AH1082R is the oil filter and there she is so uh, yeah go ahead and slap this guy in there and I got a new gasket for it so I'll go ahead and get the gasket unwrapped and get this filter in there and try to clean out some of this old oil too so I think I'm, my brake clean can is going to be my friend as far as cleaning this off. All right, let's get to it. Okay, guys. Well, I got the oil filter housing cleaned out. 
And uh, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but uh, if you were screaming at me while I was showing you the housing when it was full, well, I heard you. I didn't have to do what I did. See this little square nut right here? Well, that's a, uh, that's a drain plug for the oil filter housing. And I only now realized it because I was looking down in here and I need to clean the sledge out of there. But, uh, yeah. I could have just drained everything out before removing the filter. So, lesson learned. Uh, it's first time working on this tractor, really, as far as oil goes, so, uh, now I know. Anyway, um, I'm gonna get this, I wanna get that thing out because I just put my finger down in there as you guys saw and it's full sludge. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get, take that out, clean it up real good. Um, the inside of this housing looks pretty good. Only thing I was surprised about is this tractor wasn't leaking from around the filter housing, which is surprising to me. Um, but as you can guys can see, you know it's pretty clean up in there. Nothing, nothing really bad at all. There's no gasket. Now there should be a gasket that goes in this filter. And it's a little round rubber o-ring, kind of like this here. And it slides down into this groove. And there you go. And when you screw your housing on there, it seals this gasket, and there you go. But there was no gasket, so it's a bit strange to me. But, um, I don't know. Anyway, I have a gasket now, so I'll go ahead and get that fixed. But yeah, so, there's a drain plug. <sighs> Kicking myself in the teeth. Anyway, alright, I'll get that cleaned out and get the filter on this thing. Alrighty guys, so what we're going to do here is, uh, here's the oil I'm using. John Deere Torque Guard SAE 30. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and fill up this housing down here because this is your oil pressure line right here. It actually takes oil to the oil pressure gauge. I didn't show you guys the dash. Here's the dash. No tachometer oil pressure, voltage, and temperature. And temperature does not work. I have to figure out why temperature gauge doesn't work. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and fill this up, get the filter and gasket in there, and close that off, and then dump the rest of the oil down in here. This engine takes, I believe it was five quarts. I might go reference my book just to make sure. Um, another cool thing is that my oil filter came with this kind of retro looking sticker. This is the older uh, logo, the previous generation. This is the generation logo uh, after this tractor, but before the current logo that came out in 2000. So, this is revised April 1975. Pretty neat little sticker. I got a panel on this tractor on the other side that I will uh, stick this on and keep track of my oil change date. I am going to install an aftermarket hour meter on this thing, kind of loop it around one of the spark plug wires and kind of install it up under the hood once I get the hood back on this thing. By the way, I do have all the body panels. They're just off the tractor right now. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get the um, get an aftermarket hour meter installed on this thing. That way I can keep track for my maintenance intervals and know how many hours I'm putting on it. I don't know how many hours are on it right now. Uh, probably not a whole lot, but uh, based on how this thing runs. But I'll get that sticker put on, and I want to fill this up and get that filter installed. Uh, like I said, that gasket goes right in there. And then here's the the new filter, it just slides down over this, sits down in there real nice, and then the cap, right, that guy right there, ends up sliding over this and uh, seals her off. So, all right, go ahead and get to that and go from there. I don't know about you guys, that sure looks a whole lot cleaner to me. All right, get this drop down on there. The gasket is seated. I put a little bit of oil on there to kind of help lube it up. And we'll get the cap put back on. Looks like it's spring loaded. Set you guys down. Hopefully, you can still see. Get that tightened down. Not going to be going anywhere. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this cleaned off. A little bit of oil leaked out from the side. 
But I'm going to be checking this thing pretty hardcore for leaks. I don't believe I'll have any. The gasket's really in there. But I want to make sure this is nice and clean so that when I do start checking for leaks, I can really tell if I've got a problem or not. So, anyway, oil filter is on. This engine takes, I believe, five quarts. Go ahead and get that dumped in. And um, I want to check my plugs. These are brand new plugs. I want to read them and see how the engine's doing. I believe it's running a little rich, uh, but I need to check that. And you guys can notice that I'm missing one of my distributor spark plug wires. Um, I'm actually going to make some new wires for this thing. These wires are fine, but I don't like the fact there's no boots, and I don't know how old they are, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new set of wires for this thing. That way the ignition system is good to go. Alright, go ahead and get the oil dumped in. You know what that looks like, guys, and I'll get back with you when I'm working on spark plug wires. Alright, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, spark plug wires made up. So I've got to make three wires. I'm going to make a coil wire and two spark plug wires. Now this is what the wire they gave me. It's obviously way too long. Uh, I got a 90 degree end on it versus what was on here was the straight edge with no boot. You can see they're a bit corroded. You know, it can make some better contacts. And this is the coil wire they gave me, which is too short. So what I'm going to do is once I cut this cable to length, I'm going to use more of it to make the coil cable because uh, it's the same wire regardless. So I'm going to go measure this real quick and see exactly where I need to cut it. Okay, so I got my uh, cable cut and it's short, there's not much to it. Got a lot more cable here, I'll be able to make a nice coil wire. The coil wire that's on there, as you guys saw earlier, it's a little short. Um, I'd like it to be a little longer to get some of that tension off. But anyway, so here's this. Now what I need to do, here's an example of how it's going to end up looking like. I need to put the boot on first, and then this little piece, which are these, uh, gets pushed down into the end of the cable, right there where the copper is, and then this gets crimped down onto the insulation. Okay, so you take your boot and push it way up so we have your uh, plenty of space to get your connection on there. Take your crimp connection, push it right into the middle of the copper, like that. Then push the two ends in there. Get your pliers, crimp her down good. Right like that. Now, that's crimped. Take your boot. Slide your boot back down in there. And there you go. One completed spark plug wire. Now you come back over to your tractor or whatever you're working on. We're making spark plug wires. And you do this. Switch hands with the camera. You pop your terminal on there on your spark plug. You take your part that goes down into the coil and slide that down in there. And that tab is in the way. So we got right there. Let me see if I can bend that closed real quick. Alright, so you got your boot on your spark plug. Come down here, push this connection down into your distributor cap, make sure it's seated good. Slide your boot back down over it. Like that. And voila. One completed spark plug wire. Now I gotta do cylinder number two and the coil. So we'll go ahead and get to that and I'll check in with you guys once that is done. Alright, got the door open now. And I uh, got my new spark plug wires installed. Got the coil wire and cylinder number, I think, one and two, because the firing order is one two, I'm pretty sure. So it could be one and two. I don't know. I have to look in the book to double check. Um, let's see. The oil level appears to be good. 
Yep, she is just right. Get that dipstick on there good. I need to replace a gasket in this uh, dipstick tube. Uh, the one between the cap and the actual tube itself. But uh, let's see if she'll fire up for some new wires. Come over here, turn the ignition on. There is no key. Pull our choke and see if she'll light off. As you guys can see, she's uh, a little on the loud side, but uh, runs flawlessly. My wires are good, so that's awesome. Uh, so the thing I'm going to do next, I need to top off the hydraulic system, which if you pull the seat up, oops, that cap right there, i got to fill that up because it leaks a little bit. And I'm going to go around and grease this thing, so nothing crazy. i got to grease on the pivot right here, and uh, let's see, i got a grease fitting. Uh, I don't know, that may be one. I'll have to clean it and see. I know I've got a grease fitting right here on the steering spindles. Uh, on both sides. Um, what else? i got to grease the throwout bearing, which is, I don't know if it's that cap or on the other side. i have to check that. i got to grease with the PTO. i got to grease, you know, the three-point stuff. This track hasn't been greased in a, a number of years. So I'm going to get, go ahead and do that. And, um... I guess when she's all done, I'll go ahead and wrap up with you guys and finish this video off. So hang tight for me. Alrighty guys, that is a wrap on working on the John Deere 430 for the first time in my own shop. Uh, got her all greased up, got her fresh oil and filter, cleaned all that up, uh, new spark plug wires. I came over here and I uh, changed out and cleaned the oil bath air filter. Um, the fuel filter looks fine. Um, there's a little bit of trash in there, but overall it seems okay. And uh, yeah, guys, so all I have left to do is top off the hydraulic system, which, like I said, is under the seat. And after that, she's uh, ready to roll, so to speak. I don't really have a use for this tractor currently, but uh, believe me, she'll see some work in her day while I'm owning it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the 430, please give it a thumbs up and uh, stay tuned for more awesome content. And I will see y'all in the next video.